In the last episode, we went through the wrapping using tight house detail and achieve a very, very impressive air tightness level. In this episode, we are trying to go through a few key issues why some builders struggle so much to hit their air tightness target. And in some extreme cases, two identically designed house can result in very different air tightness level. But when you're just looking at how they wrap and seal the house, it looks almost as good as each other. Let's dive in and look at the small points that can make all the differences. Okay, Joseph, so we tested this house last week before all of the penetrations went in. We got a pretty spectacular result there. It was well and truly, I think it even made it below 0.5. Now, since then, there's been a lot of things that have affected the air tightness of this house. It's a perfect opportunity to go through them all, right? This is exactly the reason why we come back to this house and look into it again. In the last two weeks since the previous video, the electrician, plumber, solar panel installers, they all came in and installed their services, penetrating the wrap, the board, you name it, they puncture it. Let's see what happened and how they deal with it. Now, I think one thing that needs to be spoken about, because clearly the owners of this house had some ideas of where their external lighting should be, not much thought got put into exactly where might be the easiest place to put that external lighting. This has something to do with the conventional way how we build in Australia. When you're talking to this process to someone from Europe, they would think, are you guys insane? Mm. How could you not knowing where you have light taps mm. before you even set out mm. your framing? Mm. But unfortunately, this is how we build here. All right, so here we have, we've got some security that's come through. The, the problem is this bracing, isn't it? Once you put holes in front of this bracing, how do you get at it? The issue here is if we design and build like some of our counterparts in the colder region, they would know where all these penetrations is going to be when they lay the wrap. For the best practice method, when they installing the wrap, they already have the hole puncture through this board. Yeah. They know the location of where the cable will pass through. Yeah and they install a rubber grommets there to allow the cable to mm. penetrate and still allow the mm. electricians to pull or push the cables around. However, one of the reasons we come up with the idea of the tight house detail is to assist the conventional builder to keep their speed up to the requirement of air tightness. We try to adopt a set of detail that can help them to hit the mark. Yep. And in a situation like this, the tricky part is because even if we just simply seal the cable to the board, it's not really helping the air tightness design because the overall concept is the air tightness is achieved on the wrap yes. behind this board. To end up bringing the seal to the wrap, we need to punch the hole slightly bigger, let the cork go in between the board and the wrap, so we seal the wrap around this hole to the board, and then we seal the cable to the board. 
just to maintain an integral line. I guess the other solution for this could be as well, if you've got bracing board in areas that you use a wrap tight instead, just in those areas and then continue the external wrap on the outside off of that. We found as well that the Sparkies were just putting big holes for the external lighting straight through, even hitting studs, which is insane. It was like he was measuring up to go inside studs. It's Im almost impossible to seal up these holes when you've put these holes in a really bad location. This one here, it's, it's in the actual bracing board, but he's had to hole saw the bracing board out and then inject cork onto the wrap and then connect onto the cables. This is once again comes back to in other more advanced building practice countries, they will consider all the penetrations when they're setting out their start frame. Mm. So that kind of disaster is very extremely rare happening to them. Yep. This is a perfect example of the sequencing occurring here way out of whack. We could have brought in a in situ conduit into the slab to bring in the electrical and the uh, internet services. But instead, we've done the wrap, we've completed a level of air tightness here with the external wrap, and the Sparky has just drilled straight through on an angle through the studs. So this has become a little bit of a dog's breakfast here. It didn't need to be this difficult, but in the meantime, we've had to remediate, we've done our best. It's, it's been enough. We've got it to a decent level of air tightness, but it could have been done a lot easier. Again, this is a very similar problem, probably not as bad or as big, but this is uh, an external power point that the Sparky just drilled straight through the wall. We found it with our air tightness test that we did here, we even smoked it. So we've got some nice footage of this absolutely leaking a barrel of air. So this is another issue. We had to actually circular saw the bracing board out and then achieve a level of air tightness using a hybrid cork from the wrap directly to the cable. These are things that happen all after we completed the wrap and we got a pretty spectacular level of air tightness. And now we're trying to catch up and get these penetrations resolved. For some of the more observant viewer, you may be questioning what are these blobs of sealants on the wrap? Why are they everywhere? They are here because we had a little bit of issue. For this house design, they have a 75 mil thick Hebo block on the outside as cladding, as well as provide some small amount of insulative value. Unfortunately, because the availability of screws for using to fix those Hebrew blocks is either too long or way too short that is not hitting the structure, the builder had to use some longer screw that is just touching on the wrap. In a few areas, because this area can get windy when the wind blows on the wrap, it gradually push the tip of the screw through the wrap. And just as precaution, we have to come back and put a blob of cork to protect the wrap. Even if it's pushing and touching, it still won't penetrate. That tells us how careful planning and try to envision and predict what kind of issue we are going to face can be challenging. And sometimes issues just come out of the blue and hit you on the face. Okay, now here we come to a slight deviation of our standard tight house detail. If you look up here, you will see a short strip of vapor retarder wraps. At the top, we transfer from the ceiling wrap down to where the suspended ceiling will be. This variance is very important for colder climates. Areas like the colder part of climate zone 6, including locations like Bendigo, Ballarat, climate zone 7 as well. The reason behind that is for those colder climates, we need to control how much moisture from the indoor space is going into the insulated um, wall cavity area. For the occupied space, 
we will have the plasterboard with a vapor retarder paint on it to restrict how much moisture is coming through. But for the space between the suspense ceiling and the actual vapor retarder ceiling, we have this cavity here. Of course, you can build your plaster all the way up to to be able to seal back to the ceiling wrap. But when you think about the construction sequence, if you do that, your ceiling cannot be installed until you paint the entire wall, including this above ceiling area. And for a typical house, it can become very costly to get the plasterer to come back on a different time to just do your ceiling. And that's why we have this modification to include the wrap to come down to the future suspense ceiling level. So we can have an integral line of vapor control throughout the home, especially important for the colder climate. So we did mention this at the start of the video, the Sparky was too accurately drilling through for the external lighting right in studs. So this is almost impossible to seal well. We've basically had to rely on spray foam in injecting it inside the hole, and this is what we're left with now. <laughs> so it has been sealed. It's been sealed from the outside, but we've had to rely on spray foam to do it. But you know, this is not ideal. We need to potentially think more ahead about where our lighting's going and making sure it goes in a location where it's way easier to seal. Let's go on to the other one. Okay, so this is um, you know pretty standard. We've got these holes nice and in the center of two studs, uh, easy to seal. We're gonna make sure that this conduit is sealed if it's opened up in the building envelope. Again, we've got a lot of these. Uh, these are electrical cables going straight through the wrap. We've had to cake on the cork here and inject in between the electrical cables here as well to get a level of air tightness there. And then we've had to deal with the refrigi pipes going in and out of the building envelope for the actual split systems. And again, we've also got a Dakin US7 here, which has got moisture control. So it also needs air from outside to deal with that. We've also got the HRV. We all love a HRV. These are critical for homes to get fresh air in, fresh filtered air into our homes and exhausting all our bathrooms, laundries and toilets. But you know, they've got to go out of our building envelope. Here we're getting them sealed meticulously to the wrap and we had to put in a lot of love to get this level of air tightness here. It was in a pretty awkward position because it's sort of around our tight bridge as well which uh, also had to be dealt with to make these pipes going outside of the wrap airtight. As I mentioned before, refrigies, they've also got to go through our building envelope. The actual lagging needs to stop and start before it goes out, but the lagging also needs to be continuous. We're gonna to have to get the trades to fix up that lagging and make sure that that's lagged continuously as it goes through the building envelope. But it's also really important to seal inside the lagging here so that you don't get any air leakage occurring into the actual lagging itself through the building envelope. So it's good that they've cut it, but they have to make sure that it's continuous still and that the lagging is made up where, it, where the, the actual copper piping is, is exposed. Okay, so Joseph, I mean, this is the tight bridge detailing. You've also got passive house where you're relying on the vapor barrier to be our level of air tightness. Obviously the smaller the volume of the house, the more difficult it is to get it to a low level of air tightness to a 0.6. It's almost impossible when, it, when you've got a really small home. Well, unfortunately, you have a few unavoidable leakage. The smaller the home, those unavoidable leaks will play a bigger part. It will chew up the bigger portion of the pie chart. Yep. But the bigger the home, it's still important that we solve all the little tricky bits that pop up as we're building these things. Well, at the end of the day, from the past two videos, we've learned the big lesson. Getting a even a perfect membrane wrapping around your home is not enough. If you only have a superstar wrapper, that's not going to give you an airtight home by himself or herself alone. You need a team effort, every single one touching the external envelope 
will need to pay their part and we already went through the whole list of different kind of problem in different penetration if any one of them is not playing ball the air tightness performance will be compromised and it can be just the smallest things like those screws i mean who who would have thought about that if just that, that we're going in through the people block how, how would you foresee that it, it looked like they the screws weren't that long but they just got it yep that that's exactly the reason why if you want to be a builder who can deliver airtight well-built home you need to be vigilant all the time very observant keep your eyes on anything that can go wrong will go wrong and is heavily built on your experience absolutely but it's definitely possible to get a serious level of air tightness under 0.6 using the tight house detailing, using non-passive house certified external wraps that are vapor permeable to get to a pretty serious level of air tightness with a complex design. It is all possible. It all comes back to, you need a team. Every member of the team needs to play a part in delivering the end result. And no one is the single biggest superstar.